Hi, I'm Shane Jolly and I'm joined by the incredible Massa from Asian Inspirations. Now Massa, I'm a little bit excited today because I believe we're cooking one of my favourite cuisines in Japanese. Today we're going to make a menchikatsu. Ooh. So menchi means mint in Japanese. Right. So we're going to start making the mixture first. Okay. This is the beef mint. Chuck it in. Put the mint. We get the onions. Of course that fried food culture is very, uh, very prominent in Japan, isn't it? Yes. Very much so. And it's like one of the most main staple meals in Japan yeah, as well. Yeah, it really is. At least once a week. All right. Just so use your hands yep. and mix it all together just until the mint starts to become a little bit more stickier. Okay. Because at first, because it's straight out of the fridge and everything, it's a bit hard. A little bit more, a bit of tomato paste. Okay. Tofu. Yep. It creates that softer texture. Okay. And it also adds a bit of air inside. And that's how it makes it be fluffy. And with the katsu, I mean, you could do pork, beef, chicken. Literally anything. You can try okay. this with uh, pork, you can try this with um, chicken. Okay. Now that the mixture is all mixed up, we're yep. gonna add a bit of panko crumbs in there. Now panko is gonna be the thing that's gonna make it hard and gonna keep it together. Okay. Japanese panko crumbs, especially these ones from mm. the Bento brand, they're very nice and fine, mm. so you can also use it for extra textures. Mm. For example, when you're making like gratins, you can put a little bit of panko crumbs on the, over the top. Nice. That works really well. And it also works really well when you're making something like these because it blends in really well. Mm. Yeah, it does. So now that we combine all the everything together, mm. We're going to shape it into a round shape. Okay. And thanks to the bento breadcrumbs, it combines all the ingredients really well. Yeah, it does. They don't, they don't fall apart. It's... So just use your hands, make it round. Yep. Preferably make it a bit flat so that the heat goes through quickly. Okay. Before the crumb burns. Okay. Sure. Well, you can always adjust the heat of the oil, so it shouldn't be much of a problem. All right. Okay. We ready to crumb? We're ready to crumb. All right. Once the katsu goes in, just lower the temperatures a little bit. Okay. So that you want to cook through the meat. Right, okay. And how long <clears> roughly <throat> do we keep them in the pan? Usually it's approximately about five minutes. Okay. Depending on how thick the mint is. Mm. That's why I made it quite flat this time. Mm. They are smelling delicious. Thank you. Wow. Right. And if you're ever unsure if it's cooked or not, then just get one. Use a knife, just open it up, and have a look at the inside. Okay. Nice and brown? Nice and brown. Yep. <laughs> and uh, you usually accompany um, katsu with cabbage and the like? Yes. Yep. Usually it's a cabbage, because cabbage helps it to digest the fattiness of the oil. Ah. And that's why every katsu shop will have a cabbage together with it. Nice. There's only one thing that's missing. The biru. The biru, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I misplaced that, I'm sorry. I should have brought it in today. Oh, it looks great. Thank you very much. Well sir. done, sir. Excellent. I'll just go buy the beer. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs>